MTN's Zach Shermley. As MTN Zach Shermley explains, the MTN's Zach Shermley introduces us. MTN Zach Shermley joins us live from the scene. Well, we have a tragic update from that crash on the west side of Great Falls last night. One person has died. COVID-19 cases on the Blackfeet Indian Reservation. Right here, you see the stay-at-home order enforced with fines around uh, September 27th. And take a look at this, this dramatic drop all the way through October that showed it was working. Crews are telling us are currently in the mop up phase. Now Mackenzie is one of dozens of students that are quarantined here in the Great Falls Public School District. She is back to Great Falls High School on Friday, but with the new cases, she's worried that she could be in the same situation all over again pretty soon here. Uh, reporting live outside Great Falls High School, I'm Zach Shermley, MTN News. I'll send it back to you guys in the studio. Yeah, thanks a lot, Zach. Well, we've gotten so many questions over the last few weeks about which businesses in Cascade County aren't following the countywide mask mandate. Well, we wanted to find out for ourselves. Those, that's what we strive to do here at CARE TV is tell the stories of the people that live in this community and tell them to the best of our ability. So. Right. Inform and inspire. And I would exactly. say you are shining a shining example of both of those. And oh. I know that Lauren Showers, too, um, Great Falls uh, native, uh, really enjoyed your story, yeah. uh, your journalism, and, and when it was one of his favorite um, tellings of his story, how, how tragic it was, right. but how inspiring he could be. And so. all sorts of stories like that. You know, there are so many people in, in Great Falls and around north central Montana that do, are incredible people who work day in and day out, especially during the pandemic. You know, people like Trisha Gardner, the public health officer, right. Dr. Eamon Geyer, infectious disease specialist at the Great Falls Clinic, who are working to make sure that, you know, we are healthy and safe right now. And so being able to tell those stories has really been a privilege and with you the whole time, no less. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Antonio Carlos Theory Jr was an eighth grader at East Middle School in Great Falls. He died last night in what police are calling a suspicious death. The police just announced the arrest of 14-year-old Connor Spingen. MTN's Zach Shermley has been following this story throughout the day and has the latest. We are actually here on scene last night. We saw some fire trucks as well as a police department vehicle behind me. And it looked like there were some emergency responders that were sort of crouched over a body or something like that. We, of course, looked into it overnight and the Great Falls Police Department released a press statement today saying that they responded to reports of a shooting yesterday at around 5 p.m. and upon arrival found the deceased body of a 14-year-old boy. We've confirmed that was an eighth grader at East Middle School. School. Now, later today, Cascade County Sheriff Jesse Slaughter released more information. This one's a tough one. Police are ruling the death suspicious, and this morning, Theory's body was transported to Missoula for an autopsy. The incident happened near Beaverhead Court last night. At about 5 p.m., first responders were dispatched to the scene where they found the deceased body of 14-year-old Theory. GFPD is leading the investigation into what happened, and charges are being worked out by the Cascade County Sheriff's Office and the Cascade County Attorney's Office. Where we go from here is our, off, our detectives and our officers, the patrol side, they will complete everything on their behalf um, as far as the investigation goes, and that can take days to weeks. The incident comes after East Middle School closed a day earlier than the rest of the school district due to a high percentage of students and staff quarantined from the coronavirus. You know, firearms are one of those things that Montana has a lot of, and we just always ask that people remember firearm safety. We ask that people teach their children firearm safety. And the Great Falls Public Schools teacher I was texting with earlier today said of the situation, it is, quote, horrible, just horrible. In Great Falls, I'm Zach Shermley, MTN News. MTN Zach Shermley sat in on the meeting and reports on what prompted the decision. On Tuesday, Governor Greg Gianforte announced his intention to repeal former Governor Steve Bullock's statewide mask mandate. As soon as vulnerable populations are vaccinated and the legislature passes a bill granting Montana businesses liability insurance. To combat the virus, I believe providing incentives and promoting personal responsibility are more effective than imposing impractical mandates. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. The Cascade County Board of Health answering back. The virus doesn't know that the year changed. The virus doesn't know that the governor changed. By imposing a local mask mandate of their own, identical to Governor Bullock's from July. All he knows one thing, and that's a receptor in our 
nasal and throat mucosa and how to attach to it and how to get in our bodies and make us sick and try to kill us. It's all it knows. The board had two choices. Follow what the outgoing governor had, um, mirror the mask mandate that he had in place and continue that as a local order here in Cascade County or do nothing. It passed almost unanimously with some differing opinions. And it doesn't make any difference one way or the other. If we approve this motion or if we don't approve this motion, the mandates are still in effect. But we are supporting our public health officer and I like us to be in alignment with our public health officer as a body. To be clear, nothing changes significantly. Businesses will continue to operate at 50% capacity, in-person gatherings are limited to 50 people, and masks are required with the same exceptions as always. The restrictions will remain in place until Cascade County's transmission rate goes to 25 cases per 100,000 people for four weeks. In Great Falls, Zach Shermley, MTN News. I like working with people. I like solving problems for people. Jane Weber she knows the ins and outs of the county. Has worked in government for a long time. But I'm a career public servant. I did 31 years with the Forest Service. She thought about retiring in 2010. When this opportunity presented itself, I thought, well, this is a new thing, let me jump in. So she was appointed to represent District 3 on the Cascade County Commission. More than 10 years. You know, one of the things that I would like to be remembered for is number one, being honest, and number two, having high integrity in everything that I do. Lots of lessons. Have I made mistakes? Absolutely. And nobody's perfect. And dozens of projects later. One of the things I'm very proud of is the copper roof on the courthouse. And then there's little projects, um, not so little financially, but, you know, the Fox Farm Road. Um, and again, I didn't do these alone. I just was involved with the decision making of it. It's the relationships she's most proud of. First and foremost for me is forging relationships with the employees in Cascade County. Weber also served on the Board of Health during a year unlike any other. It's a big loss to our board. I think everybody knows it. So what's next? I have two grandchildren now since in the, just in the last four years. Still, she's confident Cascade County will be left in good hands. There will be a qualified person sitting in this desk. In Great Falls, Zach Shermley, MTN News. It was really um, it's so important for all of us to gather together. Number one is for the families, but put this to rest. On Friday night, a prayer. Amen. Amen. And a plea. Every third day, an emergency responder is killed. Tow truck drivers and emergency responders from across Montana and even into Canada holding a procession in Great Falls after the deaths of two tow truck drivers last weekend. All emergency responders have experienced times when we're on the side of the road recovering a scene and people, trucks, cars go whizzing by us. <laughs> I mean, just for the grace of God, all of us are still here, so. 28-year-old William Casey Allen from Reed Point and 37-year-old Ryan Visser of Billings were hit by a car and killed while helping someone on the side of the highway. <laughs> now, emergency responders sounding the alarm. Emergency vehicles that are along the side of the road and somebody's working, the safety of them is very important begging you to follow Montana state law. It's the law. By slowing down and moving over when you come near a car crash. You know, you're breaking the law when you speed through an accident scene, so please slow down. In Great Falls, Zach Shermley, MTN News.